Hello. I, well, I didn't see you there. Well, I was just about to, to read the wiki entry of my favorite Transformer while eating some ramen. I don't, I, I don't know if you'd care to join me? Oh. <laughs> Delightful. Okay, well, let's get started then. Anode is an unaligned Transformer from the IDW portion of the Generation 1 Continuity family. Excuse me. Originally a blacksmith, Anode was a specialist who was able to, with training, sculpt a malfunctioning protoform into its intended work in order. However, for reasons she long refused to disclose, the sharp tongued and irreverent Anode flagged its life and declared herself instead. An archaeologist, a treasure hunter, and an adventurer. From Cybertron to Caminus and beyond, there's no large, menacing creature she's not willing to tick off. And no artifact. Too risky for her to retrieve. Her partner and spouse, Lug, can be a common influence. But when push comes to shove, she loves every obnoxious circuit in Anna's body. Her first appearance was in Lost Light Issue 1, which is the only comic series that she's shown up in. Anode was assigned male on Cybertron. While certain members of the Primal Vanguard began identifying as she, after off-world missions, and encounters with organic races, Anode became bemused by the very concept of gender. I did not understand the significance of the pronouns until she left Cybertron when the Great War broke out. After meeting several organic races, Anno decided that she felt more comfortable as a she, and she had her chassis rebuilt into a more feminine form. Sometime in the past, Anno had made her way to Caminus, over 500 years before Thunderclash re-established regular interplanetary ties among Cybertron worlds. A very risk taker from an early age, she began honing her natural skills as a blacksmith in the lighthouse, honing her, oh, excuse me, helping newborn protoforms by sculpting their sentio metallico. Unfortunately, Anode's brash nature led her into a performing Led her, oh, excuse me again, led her into performing a live sculpting on a struggling protoform before she was truly ready, and the protoform subsequently died. Though the other members of the White House were understanding and forgiving, Anode couldn't bring herself to quit. So instead, she fudged the fa fa facility's records to make it look like she'd stolen the facility supplies of Sentia Metallica, and then she fled Camino forever. Caminus forever. Five hundred years ago, Anode and Lug traveled to Luna II at the behest of the mysterious Grand Architect, who they called Techie, in search of a piece of rare widowed metal. They found themselves on the wrong side of a Decepticon Cybernaut, and although Anna deployed a force field, Lug was convinced that they were all going to die. Anna, however, was spared by the machinations of the time-traveling Necrobot as part of his efforts to rescue the disappeared. He took Anna to the future and stored her in a stasis pod until she could recover from the disorienting effects of the time skip. In present day, Anode woke up on the Necro world, along with some other, the, the dozen other refugees the Necrobot had collected. However, her senses were still scrambled by the effects of the time jump. And as a result, she began hallucinating that Lug had arrived with her. 
Quote, in regular conversations between her and the apparitional lug. Anode attended a debriefing held by Ultra Magnus to help bring the dis disoriented time travelers up to speed on recent events. Anode was less than impressed by the Autobot's boring delivery. The two were then accosted by Swerve, who annoyed them with some nonsensical questions under the pretense of conducting background checks. When she told, when she told Swerve to leave, The Red Autobot sarcastically mentioned that she should see Velocity for time sickness. Remembering Velocity from their time together on Caminus, Anno tried to leave the Necro world via teleporter before Velocity could track her down. Rodimus and Drift caught her before they could escape, although she received a reprimand for almost wasting the one use teleporter. Anode was fascinated to see Drift's great sword. Rodimus and his allies decided to use the teleporter to head back to Cybertron to pick up another ship, and Anode stayed behind with the other time displaced Cybertronians. Anode and Lug later reconvened by the Necrobot's monument to the disappeared, where they discussed recent events and what the future held for them. Although Anna had professional aloofness regarding her new friends, she eventually confessed that she was interested in their quest for the cyber utopia, although the hallucinated lug joked that she would be more interested in plundering its treasures than starting a new life there. Her one-sided conversation was interrupted by Tailgate's fight with Fangry, and over the course of the battle she was sent flying and impaled on a piece of debris. Kaput tended to her wounds before Velocity arrived to discuss what had transpired when Anode fled Caminus. Anode explained that she'd falsified her records before fleeing. Realized that she'd never heard the story, Lug was unable to conceal her sense of betrayal and fled back to the memorial. Anode caught up with her where Lug revealed that she always thought she was the reason why Anode had fled her home world. Anon revealed her history as a blacksmith and noted that she needed a reason for her co-workers to hate her, unable to live with the guilt. Anon apologized, but then realized that her friend and lover had vanished. Anon returned to the medbay and searched for Lug, only to realize that nobody had any idea who she was talking about. Anon's explanation prompted the staff to reveal security tapes of her emerging alone from her stasis pod. After scanning the lists of names on the Necrobot's monument, she realized Lug hadn't traveled to the future with her, and was, and was merely a time sickness-induced hallucination. Kaput then took her, Nautica, and Velocity to Lug's flower, where he explained how Lug had, Lug had died. Realizing, though, that the Necrobot had preserved some of Lug's spark energy inside the flower, Anod had a, had brain, had a brainwave and rushed back to the fortress. She explained her plan to resurrect Lug by using the flower as a receptacle for Lug's spark. It was touch and go for a second there, but the new protoform stabilized, and Anode showed off her new backpack. Anode, uh, Lug turns into a backpack, that's her transformation form. Uh, she showed her new backpack to Roller when the group returned to their own universe. After Lug had fully grown, Anode confessed the truth behind the lighthouse. The two snuggled up afterwards. And then there's more, because there's a whole 24 issues of the comic left, but that's basically it. They're very cute, and I like them a lot. And I think it's cute that Lug turns into a backpack that Anna wears. All right. Well, my ramen is finished. I, I hope you had a good time. I certainly did, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.